everybody, Dr. Rick here, dropping in on you. Sunday, um, did a little workout earlier, got a little work in. Uh, I'm about to go relax and chill and hang out with the guys for a minute. Um, and I decided to talk with you guys while I was on the way there. Uh, this week, upcoming week, is going to be extremely busy on both the business side and the community work I'm doing. Look, if you guys haven't uh, checked out the teacher's episode from Saturday, you want to check that out. It was real hot. A lot of good information shared. Uh, check it out. Another good episode. Back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, I'm really proud of what we're doing with that. Look, before we get started... Uh, You need to remember that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. We are behind. What I would like to do this coming week is I would like to hit the mark of $10,000. Um, on one side, to some people, that sounds like a lot. When you understand how much goes in doing this work, you understand it's not a lot at all. Uh, but it definitely would be a way of supplementing a lot of things that are being done here. Uh, so we really, really do need you to show some love and support. Push it, share it. Uh, the link is going to be in the description box. Uh, inquiries, people who are in need of services, reach out, all of that. And I want to delve into something that is a follow-up to a video I did earlier in the week. And the video was based on the importance of socialization and the difference between uh, general socialization and racial socialization. And before I, I tap back into that just for a second, um, look, I am a person that has spent over 30 years in academic scientific study of the things that I talk about. I am a person who reads on average about 100, 500, 10 books a year. year. Yes, with everything else I do, that is what I do. I wrote uh, on average about two books a week. Uh, that's in addition to everything else I'm reading and I'm studying. I do that because I understand I don't know everything. I do that because I have a desire to know. I don't have a desire to know to talk about what I know and make myself feel like I know more than everybody. I study to find solutions and I have year after year presented solutions. I have given it everything I have. And still, anybody who has followed me for a long time know that when I make an, uh, when, when, when I discover that I've said something in error, I have no problem coming back and apologizing. I have no problem accepting critiques. I have no problem with people challenging my position. Here's the thing that I am going to ask of someone who wants to challenge my position. If you're telling me that I'm wrong on something, if you're telling me something that I'm doing, it will never work. Uh, I am going to sit up and say, okay, you have the stage. Now tell me what evidence you have that what you're saying about me is accurate. If it doesn't work, show me how it doesn't work. Show me why it will never work. Show me what should be done. And more importantly, if you're going to come up to somebody who has put 30 years in the game to sit up and provide solutions for people he loves and has done it tirelessly, has done it d doing loss and, and disappointment and everything else that I've committed myself to, if you're gonna show up and do that, at least come with a solution. And if I ask you three different times to produce a solution and you dance around that, we don't even need to be on the same uh, platform discussing it, debating it. We're, we're not in a position where you can debate me. If you haven't put in the work, you can't debate me. You can't challenge me. It's not that I am never wrong. It's that when you come to me, that's the way you come to somebody who has put in the work. And the thing is, when it comes to racial socialization, um, and it is absolutely necessary for all black children, but especially important uh, for black boys. For the last 20 years, I've been doing research on African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. I've told you about this. I discovered five of the primary influences. I also found that the most uh, prevalent uh, positive influence on it is racial socialization. But I also, in studying racial socialization, discovered not only do we re reduce the risk of these young boys being violent towards one another, towards our daughters, towards their own moms and family members, 
but we also reduce the risk of them dropping out of school. We also reduce the risk of them becoming incarcerated. We, re we increase the risk of them becoming financially responsible. We increase the, the risk of them being more engaged in their children's lives. We increase the risk. I mean, not the risk, we increase the, the chance of them becoming more involved in their children's lives, and we also increase the possibility of them becoming business owners. All of this from properly socializing and racially socializing them. Why is racial socialization uh, necessary in addition to general socialization? Well, first of all, general socialization is basically what every parent does in preparing their child to be able to go out into the world and function within society in a, an acceptable and productive manner. You tell them that you know who they are. You give them an identity. You give them a purpose. You give them the guidelines, the boundaries, the rules. Uh, you give them all of that, and you, you, you tell them how important, how uh, exceptional they are. You build their self-esteem by building their self-image, their self-concept. You build their self-esteem, their self-confidence, uh, and their uh, they will develop self-discipline. That's every kid. The reason that you have to racially socialize black kids, especially black boys, is because the moment they walk from underneath your cover, the moment they walk from underneath your protection, they're immediately exposed to mechanisms, people, systems, institutions that will diametrically oppose everything you told them and look to undo it. It will present to them inferiority complexes, intellectual, physiological, uh, systematic, inferiority complexes. It will introduce to them uh, Eurocentric ideas of what's beautiful and challenge their notion that they are beautiful, that they are absolutely wonderful, that they're gorgeous, that they're remarkable. It will present to them in every way possible and at every turn and every corner that they don't fit in, they're not accepted, and they don't measure up. And so when you racially socialize them, you do that in a manner where you introduce them to the power of their identity as it is anchored in their race so that they understand that their race is not a death sentence, that their race is not uh, a negative, that they understand that there's actually power in their blackness, that there is actually giftedness in their blackness, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them being black. It is immensely important that this is done. This isn't something that Rick made up. This isn't something Dr. Rick made up. This isn't something I went out and just decided, hey, this would be a good idea to sit up and push for the next 20 years. No. You, 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 the people that I, whose shoulders I stand on now are some of the greatest black minds in psychology in recent history. Dr. Naeem Albarn, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Um, Joy DeGruy, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, um, Dr. Howard Stevens out of the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, a more uh, martyr, Dr. Umar Johnson. If there's anybody that has lectured and written more on the disproportionality of special education referrals in uh, public schools, it would be Umar Johnson, Dr. Umar Johnson, uh, than me, it would be Umar Johnson. That's how hard I've been going into paint. That uh, I, I've, I've written, I've lectured, uh, it's in my books, it's in papers. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that our children aren't protected. I'm trying to tell you that there's a way to insulate them. There's a way to protect them so that they not only go out into this world that's inherently hostile towards them and compete, but they can win. They can consistently position themselves to build and gain power. We won't close the wealth gap talking about group economics to people who can't understand it. We'll close the wealth gap by teaching the next generation the importance of group economics as an automatic inherent idea. They will grow up thinking that's simply what they do because they were properly socialized. They were racially socialized to understand the importance of unification within our race and why this individualized mindset that we function on now to where everybody's for themselves, everybody is against everybody else and, and, and everything in between they'll understand that that's not how we're going to get it done. The greatest force we have is our unification. The greatest force we have is to operate in a tight knit, um, systematic approach. We need to develop codes of conduct. We need to develop, um, uh, codes of conduct protocols. Instead of reacting to everything, we need to have protocols. When this happens, this is what you do. 
when you see this happen, this is what you do. When a police officer does this, this is what you do. When something happens like this, when a politician does this, this is what you do. Instead of saying, oh my God, and everybody's got picket signs, everybody's riding and nothing's getting done, but stuff tar being torn up and burned down, but nobody cares because you have an executed power. Matter of fact, the one thing that, that when a, when, when, when a three-year-old throws a tentum, temper tantrum, uh, what they're executing is they don't have any power. So the way they express themselves is by falling out, by throwing up, but just by having a tantrum because they can't execute power. The more they get to where they can do things for themselves, the more with autonomous they become, the less they throw tantrums. Why? Because they found out a lot of stuff they can do themselves. Same thing. When you sit up and you throw temper tantrums, you keep tearing up stuff. All you do is send them the message that you still don't know how, how powerful you are, that you still don't know what you're capable of. And what we have to do is understand that there are some that it's going to be harder to reach. And while we're trying to reach them, we're losing ground. So how do we do it? We need to protect and insulate the next generation. If everybody keeps saying it's too late, it's too late, well then what are we going to do? Is we going to sit back and say, okay, it's too late, so we're not going to even do nothing for the next generation either. No, we need to work on the back end and the front end. We need to be working on these young babies so that they are empowered, so they know who they are, so they're properly socialized, both generally and racially, that they are ready and that they're holistically educated. And if you've read any of my books, if you've heard any of my lectures, when I talk about education, I'm not talking about academic skills. Academic skills is a part of it, but academic skills does not come close to holistic education. The first step in holistic education is socialization. It is the establishment of an identity that they have within themselves that they are sure of that provides them with the confidence in themselves that they can go out into that world and do whatever it is they need to do. If they don't know how to do it, they can learn it. If, they, if it doesn't exist, they can create it. That's the first thing that you have to do is you have to holistically educate them. After you have holistically educated them, then you can move off and to different forms of empowerment based off capacity, based off gifting, based off history. They need to know who they are. They need to know who they are separate from white people. They need to know who they are uh, in, in, in line with white people. They need to know that they're not inferior. They need to know that they're exceptional, that they're extraordinary, that they're phenomenal, that they are capable of doing remarkable things in this world, even when people are trying to stop them. They need to understand that that's a part of socialization. This isn't question in any field of study of human behavior. This is just me taking it to the next level. This is me investing time, energy, and effort to understand that what we need is not only a rite of passage to where we socialize young black men, uh, young black boys into being black men. We need a universal understanding of what black manhood is. We need to have a universal de definition so that everybody know what, what, they, what we're supposed to be looking for, where everyone knows what we're supposed to be holding, hold, holding these young fellows accountable for. That needs to be an understanding of this. That is what we're talking about. And so my thing is, I have no problem being challenged. I invite people to step in and say, hey, I don't know about this, what's going on with this? Why is it done that way? Here's what I think. And then be able to explain in depth, not just, well, this, had, you know, uh, if you don't think what I'm doing is working, you got a couple of things. You can just back off, stop listening to me, stop watching, stop reading books, whatever, I, whatever I've done over the last 25, 30, well, actually 35 years. Uh, if you want to talk total, but if you want to talk really intensely the, over the last 25 years, if you want to sit up and say, okay, I ain't feeling it and, and, and move around, I understand that. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to be accepted. I'm not here to be praised. Now, don't get me wrong. When someone tells me, hey, what you did was this. When someone tells me, hey, if it, during this time when you, when I was in, at this point in my life and I heard your videos, you lifted me, all of that, I'm not telling you that you know, it doesn't feel good and I'm not honored when someone says something nice about who I am and what I do. Always good to be affirmed, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to be a force. I'm here to help. I'm here also knowing I don't know everything. So when someone says something, I take it. But if you're going to come challenge me, I've put thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of research, literally scientific research, real research into understanding this. I have been on the phone. I have been through emails with all of the people that I just mentioned, except Dr. Amos Wilson. At some point, 
asking for their guidance. Asking for, let me mention Dr. Claude Anderson, although he's not in the vein of psychology, he's in the vein of education, and he's definitely in the vein of understanding economics. And uh, he played a major role in the development of our page on the Odyssey Project that deals with uh, the blueprint. Uh, so, and, and I listen and I'm open because I don't know everything. Uh, I wake up every day understanding I don't know everything, but I wake up knowing that I'm gonna learn something today. And so my thing is, if you're gonna challenge me, just make sure you come with information and responsiveness to what I'm gonna ask you after you challenge me. That's all, that's all. You know, don't tell me it's, it doesn't work and you don't have an alternative. Don't tell me it doesn't work and you can't walk me through the steps of why it doesn't work. Just because you can't see it and don't feel it. Hell, black people don't participate in any grand scheme of wealth building doesn't mean wealth building doesn't work. Now, it does. It, there's definitely a uniqueness in our approach to doing it because they have things in place to stop us from doing it at the level in the same way they do it, but it's still there. It's being proven every day. There are a group of us, we're out there and we are doing some things and obviously we, again, you learn how to move in the shadows. But it, it can be done. So just like that can be done, even though nobody's participating and, and moving in it, so can this. The thing is, the quicker we get involved in it, the more we support it, the more powerful it becomes, the more impactful we become, and the better the next generation. We're looking at the first generation ever in the history of the US where we're actually going to be leaving the, this generation in a worse situation than we found it because we have done just that horrible of a job. And that's on a general level, but also definitely in the black community. We have to do a better job. Again, uh, we're pushing to raise 10,000 this week. The, uh, the information to support what we do is in the description box. You can either do it through our Cash App account or you can do it through our primary uh, donation link. It's in there. Uh, again, I'm always open to conversation. But if you're going to debate me, you better have put in your work. If you're going to challenge me, you better have put in your work. Most of the time, I'm not even going to respond to it because it's so off base. And it tells here's something I'm going to leave you with. Most people don't realize that when you start talking, you reveal a lot. The old folks used to say it's better to be assumed a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. What does it mean? There are times when you start talking, anybody that actually has an understanding of what you're talking about knows you don't, just by what you say. And the more you talk, the more you reveal, you don't know. It's okay not to know, but when you wanna sit up and you wanna get in the field and pretend you know, just be careful when you start talking that there's nobody around you that knows. On that note, look, I'm out of here. Uh, again, we need your support. Uh, the link is in the description box. I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable day.